started. Just want to go over the normal stuff with you. So the Headwater Science Center, we are open seven days a week. Monday through Saturday, we are open 9.30 to 5. And on Sunday, we are open 1 o'clock to 5. Um, also, again, later this month, we have prehistoric painting night. So please feel free to give the Headwater Science Center a phone call to RSVP to reserve your spots. We only have 20 spots available for this exercise. You'll get to paint your own woolly mammoth and take it home with you. And you'll also learn quite a bit about woolly mammoths. We have a Bemidji State University capstone student running this particular uh, month's event. So hopefully you enjoy that. He's been working very hard on this. Uh, we also have a new exhibit opening uh, near the end of the month, uh, which should be a fun one. Uh, but also, starting to be spring outside, which has got to be nice. The weather's getting a little bit nicer. We're getting rain instead of snow. Uh, but now we're going to get right into the live stream. So we're going to continue on with marine reptiles. Today we are going to talk about ichthyosaurs. Ichthyosaurs are probably one of the most recognizable Mesozoic animals that isn't a dinosaur. Ichthyosaurs are also probably the most marine tide of the marine reptiles, and you'll see why when we zoom in on these drawings in just a second. But before we do that, we're going to go over just a little bit of the basic information about them. So they are in the Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Chordata, the class Reptilia, and the order Ichthyosauria. And Ichthyosauria is a class of reptiles, or an order of reptiles, that we are still not exactly sure where it fits within all the other reptiles that we know of. So we're not actually sure what an Ichthyosaur's closest modern relative is. Uh, but these animals, again, were very aquatic, not possessing any form of legs. Uh, their legs had evolved to resemble uh, the flippers and the flukes of fish. It actually had a fluked tail that was uh, held along a vertical axis and that moved side to side like a fish. Uh, the, the word ichthyosaur means fish lizard. Um, and these are also one of the older groups of marine reptiles that are distinctly identifiable from their fossils. Uh, we find ichthyosaurs from anywhere uh, from 250 all the way up to 90 million years ago. Uh, the earlier ichthyosaurs tended towards a longer eel-like body, resembling actually mosasaurs that we went over last week. Um, but as time went on, as they got more specialized, uh, they started to trend more towards fish-like appearances. Uh, sort of like almost a tuna-shaped body. Uh, but they had a very prominent long head. Uh, ichthyosaurs also could vary wildly in size. Uh, you could get very small ichthyosaurs, only about three feet in length, but the very largest ichthyosaurs would actually measure up at roughly 65 or more feet. Um, there's a lot of different species. Uh, the one I have drawn up here is Ophthalmosaurus, but ichthyosaurus itself is also roughly around that size of, of Ophthalmosaurus, which sat more around 19 to 20 feet. Whereas stuff like Shonosaurus and Californosaurus uh, were quite large, um, reaching sizes um, rivaling small baleen whales. And again, like all the marine reptiles we're talking about, they're secondarily aquatic, uh, meaning these animals did at one point have a land-living ancestor, uh, but readapted to life in the water. Uh, Ichthyosaurs are first found in the fossil record in the Triassic, uh, the time period uh, that starts the Mesozoic. And the Triassic was a time where there were a lot of very odd animals. Uh, very likely I'm going to start covering more of the Triassic animals coming up soon because they're very interesting, very odd. Uh, after mass extinctions, due to the wide availability of open niches and typically radical shifts in habitat, uh, animals diversify quite rapidly into a lot of very odd, very unique forms. That Some of them are more successful than others. Out of the early Triassic animals, the ichthyosaurs wound up being really successful. They cornered many aquatic niches. Uh, their distribution was worldwide. Um, they were carnivores. 
eating anything from fish to shelled animals like ammonites, uh, all the way for the larger ones, very likely eating uh, smaller marine reptiles. They were quite efficient carnivores. Uh, some of them, actually many of them, possessed quite large eyes in relation to their body size. Many of them were either nocturnal or potentially diving predators like today's beaked whales. Uh, but they were fully aquatic, could not go on land at all. They were also live birthing. There's actually some pretty amazing fossils of ichthyosaurs that are fossilized where they failed to fully birth the young. So it's preserved basically mid-birth. Uh, again, that very fish-like body is very good for swimming, very streamlined. They also, for a reptile really uniquely, had heterodont teeth, meaning differentiated teeth, where they possess multiple different shapes of teeth in their mouth. Um, they did still have four flippers. Their hind flippers were often much smaller than their front flippers, though, which were a lot more like a shark or a dolphins. They had a dorsal fin, which is really cool. And they had what are called scleral rings in their eyes, which is something that actually birds have today, many of them, which are basically rings of bone which help support the eye structure. They were likely warm-blooded as well, which for a reptile is quite rare. Um, they did not, from what we can tell from some skin impressions, have prominent scales on their skin. Either they were quite small or they did not have scaled skin. Uh, another kind of cool thing about them, based on the body shape, they may have been blubbered animals, uh, as in they had a layer of fat and blubber to keep them warm in waters. Uh, they also didn't have these large, long heads where they had a very large cranium and long jaws, long rostrums. Uh, and then, the, as we've talked about, a very wide size variance, everything from, you know, three feet up to getting to be the size of whales. Uh, small whales, at least. Uh, they also... They are another reptile that used gastroliths, uh, which meant swallowing round stones to help crush the food in their stomachs, uh, which is really cool behavior. Uh, some modern animals, like alligators, still do this. Also a lot of birds. So, one of the other things about ichthyosaurs is they're a really good example of convergent evolution. Um, they filled niches similar to modern-day dolphins, similar to sharks, uh, which led to very similar body plans. So I'm going to have to step behind the camera for a little bit. So... Zooming in on the drawing that I've made... Let's see, yep, you can still hear me. So we're going to zoom in on that. I've drawn... And today, this is, as you can see from the label, not to scale, an ophthalmosaurus, a great white shark, and a common dolphin. Uh, you'll notice that all of these animals, for being fast, marine, fully marine predators, they all have long, uh, streamlined bodies. Uh, you'll notice that the ophthalmosaurus and the dolphin both have longer faces, with those long set of jaws, good for grabbing fish. You'll also notice that the Ichthyosaur and the Great White Shark both have vertically fluked tails, where the dolphin has a horizontally fluked tail. Now, all three of these animals, while the placement might be slightly different, have dorsal fins as well. And they all have pectoral fins. So the thing with convergent evolution is that, typically, you'll have animals that are filling the same or similar niches trend towards similar, but not always identical forms. So there's always going to be small differences, much like we went over with our snakes, where the bald python has those little heat-sensing pits, and the red-tailed boas do not. Uh, you can also see the other thing is that uh, the ophthalmosaurus... Uh, actually, ooh, did not get that drawing too well. Uh, their nostril is in front of their eye, where the dolphin has a blow hole, and the shark's nostril is quite forward on the head. Uh, the reason for the dolphin having the blow hole on top makes it easy to surface. The great white shark... Uh, they don't breathe air, so their nostril can be forward placed on their face. The ophthalmosaurus and most ichthyosaurs did not have nostrils that were placed very efficiently. They likely had to stick their head out of the water to get, catch a breath, at least to where their nostrils could get out of the water. So one thing is the ophthalmosaurus and the great white shark are roughly the scale with each other, though. Um, just to show how large ichthyosaurs, even 
what we would call smaller ichthyosaurs could be, and that's just because the fossil record does tend to favor larger animals. But you also see again the differences. Uh, you'll see that the dolphin lacks hind fins at all. They simply have their tail and their pectoral fins, whereas the great white shark has a smaller, pe uh, smaller fin underneath its body. Uh, and the Ophthalmosaurus has its hind set of fins still. So we're going to zoom back out. But Ichthyosaurs, unfortunately, did actually not get to the end of the Cretaceous. Ichthyosaurs went extinct in the mid-Cretaceous, around 90 million years ago. There was a small mass extinction that happened specifically among ocean life at the time. Um, other animals that went extinct around the time were Ichthyosaurs. Uh, there might have been a severe at the time due to some continental drift and uh, certain volcanic activity and other things, geologic happening at the time, which caused disruptions to a lot of animals' food sources, um, ichthyosaurs included. So these animals, unfortunately, were eventually no longer with the rest of their Mesozoic counterparts for the duration of the late Cretaceous. But that's not to, let's not discount them. They were successful for quite a long time. 250 to 90 million years. That's a long time. Uh, they were one of the dominant forms of ocean life. And the niches that they filled in the Jurassic, Triassic, and early Cretaceous are still niches that animals fill today. Ichthyosaurs are widely credited with being an animal that's sort of laid the groundwork for the ocean ecology that we experience today, and I think that shouldn't be understated. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be today's live stream. Uh, again, please, if you want to come to Prehistoric Painting Night, RSVP uh, so we can guarantee you a spot. Uh, otherwise, on the day of, if there are open spots, we can accept walk-ins. So it is on April 22nd that we will have Prehistoric Painting Night for Woolly Mammoths. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a wonderful day, and let's start enjoying this nicer weather. Can't wait for the lake to thaw out.